Hey everybody, welcome to the 10th installment of the Willys Project. In the last video, everything we did was pretty easy. In this video, everything is either hard or tedious or heavy or messy. This video took me about three weeks to put together and it was a lot of work. I hope you enjoy it. We're basically only gonna cover two topics today. Number one is the tailgate, number two is the brakes. So let's get to it. All right, let's tackle this tailgate problem. If you remember from one of the previous videos, uh, I pointed out that we no longer have a structural place to uh, latch the tailgate on this side. Let me show you what the other side looks like. See, there's supposed to be this tab right here and uh, it's supposed to fit inside the tailgate and that's how you keep it latched to prevent it from opening. But this side, it looks like it's just been completely ripped out of there, probably rusted, got weak, and uh, at some point just completely fell out. I was hoping I could just buy this little tab and weld it in, but number one, they don't seem to sell these exact tabs for this exact tailgate. And number two, we have a larger problem than that we can't just weld it in because we have to kind of modify what is here. Um, before we can weld some new metal in there. So uh, I'm gonna get the tailgate removed and we'll get it on a bench or something and we'll get a better look at it and I'll show you what we're dealing with. A little stiff right there, huh? I think I can actually fix that also, but let's uh, move on. So this is definitely not your modern type of a hinge or pin situation. This is just a rod from the tailgate going into a piece of metal. There's no bushing, there's no nothing. So in order to get the tailgate removed from the truck, we have to remove this little bracket and uh, the other side has one as well. But of course we only need to remove one side. there's the nut from the inside and hopefully we just have to remove this bottom one and swing this out of the way there we go All right, here's the good side. It's kind of a strange design here. This right there is part of the tailgate, and this right there is part of the tailgate. And then there's an opening in there that runs down the whole thing. As you can see, there's a cavity up in there. Inside that cavity, they slipped this little bracket and it looks like they welded it on somehow on the inside. Clearly that was done at the factory. On the bad side here, you can see what I was referring to. This is the cavity that runs down the whole side of the tailgate. And that bracket was, I think, welded to a piece of the tailgate here that's now missing. I guess the only way I'm gonna be successful at this is to for sure cut off this jagged piece right here so it's at a 90 degree angle, something we can actually work with. And maybe even this piece here I don't know. Let me go see what kind of metal I have in stock and uh, I'll go from this there. Section. All right, I found a piece that I'm happy with for this section right here. It's about the same width and about the same thickness, more or less. And then I uh, have to find a piece for here and then we have to fabricate that tab with that oval in it also. I guess we'll start to cutting. I'm gonna cut both of these off. I'll clean up all the rust around so we can weld it and then I'll start making some templates. All right, here's what we got so far. I'm happy with this one right here. I just need to clean up the edge here 
and clean up the edge there. You can see right here, this one was bent down. I don't know if we can do much about that. Right in here, it's high on this backside, so I think if I put a hammer to that, that might raise that up a little bit. It's not a critical thing, but as long as we're doing it, we might as well try it. Well, after about two and a half hours, I got my pieces cut out. Um, this one, of course, took the longest. But I made it out of one of those pieces of flat stock. I, of course, made the template off of this one over here. I'm happy with how it turned out. Because of the engineering on the other side, there was a piece of metal here that was curved. And then, of course, there was a piece of metal here. But there was also the tab. It had a separate piece of metal that came down and was welded to this piece. So there's no reason to try to duplicate all that. Um, made a curved piece to fit in there and then a flat piece to go on top and then we'll weld the tab strategically like that right. remember i said i was going to try to knock this dent out and up well i took one hammer blow to it and bondo started popping off this tailgate like popcorn on a hot grill we've got dents all over this thing i mean there's bondo all the way up to here you can see it. Um, I hate to be a pessimist, but this tailgate is pretty much beyond repair. If this is gonna be a patina truck, we can work with this tailgate, but if we're gonna put a shiny paint job on it and make it look pretty, this tailgate isn't gonna work. got this one tacked into place now I'm gonna do the uh, top piece and then we'll do the tab at the end After a lot of uh, welding and grinding, here's what we got so far. I still have a little cleanup to do, but my battery went dead in my grinder, so uh, we gotta wait for that to charge, but I'm happy with this so far. Let's actually get a test fit and uh, make sure it works, and then I'll probably take it back off and finish the uh, touch up and get it painted all right here's the first mock-up <laughs> uh, I gotta give myself credit here I really think I nailed it and here we are in the front side I don't think I could have gotten it any better than that I ground down most of the welds, and like I said, I'm still not done doing that. I still have to finish it a little bit more. It's a little bit rough. If you remember, this is all new metal from this corner to here, down to there, and then over there. And on the inside here, this is all new metal also from here to there, down the corner, and then right about there, out to there, and of course the tab, that's all fresh metal. Like I said, I got a little more cleanup to do, but I am very happy with that. So these are the old chain hooks from the tailgate, and this is one of the sides here. The chain is pretty ratty and rusted, so uh, I'm not going to reuse this. I've already got some new stuff, but I kind of like the shape of these old hooks. I can't find a modern equivalent of this, so I think what I'd like to do is try to use the new chain with the old hooks. But we've got a couple issues here. Number one, they're all rusted up and, and crusty. That's no big deal. I can throw them in a vapor rust overnight and they'll be good to go. But you can see this one, we've got some issues. 
it makes you wonder what kind of force this sustained to get to that shape. You know, this is pretty thick stuff. I'm gonna do my best to recreate this shape. And if I can get it, then great. But if not, then we'll have to uh, go with plan B. So to start with, I guess I'll get this old chain removed. Um, we're gonna have to open these eyes up just a little bit anyway to get the new chain in there. So we'll get this removed and then uh, I'll try to get this hook reshaped. All right, after about an hour of beating and bending and cussing, this is what we got. I think it's close enough, I think it looks great. Um, I've got both of the eyes opened up to accept our new chain. So we'll leave those open for now. So now we're gonna soak them in the evaporust overnight. So let's see what happens. Okay, it's the next day. The evaporust did its job, it removed all the surface rust, and uh, we're ready to assemble the chain. I've already got it cut to length, so we're just gonna put it on one end. Now we're going to put this nylon cover over this chain, so That'll do actually a few different things. It'll protect the chain a little bit from the elements and stuff. It will protect the truck from getting scratched by the chain, you know, dangling around when it's going down the road. And it will also cover up the section of new shiny chain that just isn't gonna look right on the truck. So I'm gonna get this nylon installed right now and we'll show you how I do that. All right, I've got the hook I'm um, just secured into a vise right now. And I'm gonna try to open up the nylon here. And then we're gonna drop the string through it. And hopefully we'll see it come out the bottom here in a minute. There it is. Now we can pull the nylon all the way up the chain to where the hook is. I like to have extra so it kind of scrunches up on there like that. Now we can grab the chain and we can take this whole thing back over to uh, the workbench. Okay, let's get the string removed. And here's our open chain link. This is the part that's gonna latch onto the truck. So we're not gonna latch this yet, but we're gonna get it on and get it ready to latch. All right, so there's the piece. And I want to do one more thing before we put it on the truck. You can see the nylon has some frayed ends on it. Well, we're just going to uh, melt it around the ends. That will get rid of all the frayed ends. And it will also um, shrink the diameter of the nylon just a little bit. And it will also prevent it from fraying. All right, that's good. Let's do this side the same way. All right, let's go see how it looks on the truck. I really like that. And I like the fact that we reuse these old hooks too. I made the chains a certain length. So when the tailgate is open, it sits flat level with the bed and you can use it as a workbench or work surface or carry long lumber in here or whatever. 
All right, guys, well, the tailgate is pretty much done. This is one of those projects that I thought was only gonna take a couple of hours. It ended up taking about nine hours total. And that was just not conducive to getting the whole thing on camera. It would have been a nightmare to edit and it wouldn't have made any sense to watch. So, so I'm just gonna show you and explain uh, everything I did here. All right, well, I don't wanna have an hour long summary for you either, so I'm just gonna make this quick. This was our bad side. This was the area that was completely missing and rusted out. Remember, we cut it out at 90 degree angles, so I had something to work with, and I welded new metal in. Those two pieces are welded together, and the tab is welded to them, so it's nice and strong. I chose a gauge of metal for the patch panels here that kind of matched what was already existing on the tailgate. As you can see, this is a thinner one, and this is a thinner one but the uh, tab is thicker. I did that intentionally uh, because that's kind of how it was before. If you look at the thickness here of the tab, you can see it's pretty much like the uh, factory original one. As far as the paint goes, first I shot it with red orange colored primer, starting on our new metal here, and then I went all the way down. On top of that, I put a light coat of white. On top of that, I put a light coat of gray. And then on top of that, I put a light coat of ivory. And then I came back and distressed the whole area to kind of make it blend into the truck. And by using the red orange colored primer underneath all the paint, it kind of looks like rust or old primer showing through, which is what I was hoping for. So again, I distressed that all intentionally to make it blend in with the rest of the truck. If you remember right down in somewhere in here and here, we had those two pieces of Bondo pop out. Well, I absolutely hated how that looked. So just to make it kind of like it was, or maybe even a little bit better than it was, I simply refilled those divots with Bondo, made it smooth, and then I painted over the whole thing just like I did up here with all those different colors of paint and the uh, red-orange primer underneath it. It just looked so bad with those big chunks missing, I had to do something. Trying to intentionally patina paint is harder than you might think if you've never tried it before. It's very difficult to get the same tone of the rest of the paint on the truck in the same wear and the same age. I could probably do a little bit more work down here, but you kind of reach the point of diminishing returns on something like this. Overall, I'm very happy with it. I think it looks great. I think it matches the truck pretty well. And again, let me show you the alignment of the new tab versus the old. I mean, like I said before, I don't think I could have gotten it any better. So as far as the welding goes, it's like painting. Um, if you wanna do a good job at welding, 95% of the work is gonna be in the preparation, and then 5% is gonna be the welding itself. That's the easy part. All right, the last thing I did to this tailgate that I wanna share with you. Remember, right when we were getting started, the tailgate was binding up right about there. It was making all kinds of noise and it was kind of hard to get past that point. I got that fixed also. It opens nice and easily now. In fact, it'll drop if you let it doesn't make the noise anymore, it doesn't bind up. Well, I've been putting this off long enough. It's time we finally inspected the brakes on this rig. For starters, just to let you know, everything seems to work. You press on the brake pedal, it feels good, and it stops the truck. We don't appear to have any leaks at any of the wheel cylinders or the master cylinder. Um, however, we need to get our eyeballs on the brake components to make sure the truck is gonna be safe for more regular use. It's gonna be kind of a big job just to inspect the brakes but fingers crossed that they've been redone, you know, in the last 10 or 20 years and we can work with what we have. I, you know, you never know what you're gonna find when you get in here. 
And what I'm hoping not to find is it just a bunch of old rusty components. If that's the case, you know, we're gonna have to end up replacing everything. But anyway, let's get the wheel off and see if we can get this drum off. Well, the rubber line between here and the wheel cylinder looks to be semi-okay. It's still kind of pliable. It's not all hard and crusty. And maybe this has actually been replaced in this century. That would be good. But you can tell over here where the rubber connects to the uh, metal line, this is clearly not from this century. That's most likely the original metal line that came with the truck. That'd be my guess anyway, judging on. So I've got the wheel off. Now we need to figure out how to get the drum off. Uh, for starters, need to remove this cap. All right, looks like there's a little uh, snap ring there that needs to come off. I guess that's all one piece there. Take a look at this. Look how boogered up this nut is. I mean, we got some major chunks uh, taken out of this nut clearly somebody in the past has not had the right tool and they were just using like a, a punch or a screwdriver and a hammer to remove that nut wow that is not a very good way to do that there's actually a uh, a washer underneath this nut that's folded up right there so we'll bend that washer down flat We're going to try the impact on the lowest setting here. This is a special tool, by the way, um, that you absolutely need for this job. If you don't have this, it's going to be super hard to get that nut off. As you can see, that's why it's damaged. Like I said before, somebody has not had this tool in the past and really just boogered up this nut. There's another nut in there and it's loose. Interesting design. I got an inner nut and an outer nut. That one should have been tighter than it was. Okay, there's the inner. For whatever reason, this one isn't boogered up. I think that must be it. Now well, there's a little retaining ring first with the keyway notch on it yeah come on come on all right mission accomplished first impressions are good so far just by a glance As long as we're in here, we're gonna make sure these uh, six bolts on the backing plate are tight. I just have it on the lowest setting on the impact, so it's not like we're really trying to ram these in. I just wanna see if they're tight or not. That one's tight. That one's tight. Okay, good, those are all tight. All right, I'm actually gonna use some brake clean for what it was intended for once. Just gonna hit all the components Get the spider webs and the dust and the dirt out. Don't worry about getting the pads, this stuff dries right away. I am pleasantly surprised by what we found so far. Let me get you in a little closer here. First, Look at the thickness of the pads here. There's still a lot of meat left on that. That's very good. 
same with this one a lot of meat left on it we look at the, the surface of the pads themselves they look decent they're not all scored up uh, here's the wheel cylinder 14203 USA and the boots are actually still pliable it's hard to say but just looking by what we have and uh, also the color of the metal part of the brake uh, pads you can tell uh, it's obviously oxidizing but that's not 70 years old you can tell that there was fresh metal under there in the semi recent past so who knows 10 years 20 years ago I don't think it's been any longer than that and I don't think we have to touch the side this looks this all looks good to me let's check out the brake drum yeah so we're just feeling for heavy scoring gouging anything like that and uh, I'm not feeling anything at all if you guys work on as much old stuff as I do do yourself a favor get yourself a uh, powered uh, grease gun oh my goodness these things save a lot of time And no, I'm not doing a deep dive on the bearings. They look just fine. There was no wobble to the wheels. I do want to get the part number off it though. This is a Timken 18590. Well, so I'll just jam it full with some new grease and uh, we'll be good to go. Now we have this inner nut. So now listen carefully when I spin the drum. You can hear there's just a teeny little bit of brake pad drag. In my opinion, that's where you want these things. It's just to have just a teeniest bit of drag so you know that the brake shoes are adjusted out as far as they can go without being with you know without stopping the wheel so you just got to kind of get a feel for it that feels pretty good and then once we get the outer nut on then we need to reach in there with the screwdriver or something and bend up the outer tabs just a little bit and it acts as a kind of a lock washer all right here's the outer nut um, it's still got boogers in it but I filed it all down so there's none sticking up anymore or sticking out and it's just fine to reuse Okay, now this uh, outer piece goes on over the spline of the axle. It has it is splined as well, of course. And this snap ring goes on, kind of keeps the axle in place, sort of, kind of. Let's jam some grease into the cup and put it back on. All right, one wheel down, three to go. Let 
Well, we pretty much got more of the same on the driver side here. Everything looks pretty good. Um, looks to me like everything was replaced the same time as the passenger side. The brake pads have the same amount of material left. They're still in good condition. The uh, wheel cylinder boots are still pliable. They're not all hard and cracked. The only thing that was a little bit suspect on this side, well, number one, this nut was even in worse condition than the one on the passenger side and I already cleaned this one up with a file it was uh, it was really bad before I cleaned it up and the other thing was this washer that was supposed to be bent up you know around that big nut to sort of act like a, a lock washer it wasn't bent up at all it was just flat and the outer nut was a little bit loose so it was a good thing we got that uh, checked and fixed so I'm gonna lube everything back up here and put the drum back on and put the wheel back on and then we'll move to the rears. All right, here we are on the passenger side rear. I'm a little worried about this. I think it's gonna be more difficult to get the drums off than it was in the front. But uh, let's give this a try. I've already got the cotter pin uh, backed out, ready to go. Need to remove this nut. That's a one and seven sixteenth inch socket. And there's a thick washer behind the nut. Now the drum should come off. I had a large puller with arms on it like this, but you really shouldn't grab the outer drum like that. I think it's possible that if you put enough force on it that you could actually warp the drum. Um, I took the centerpiece from that same puller apparatus and I fabricated my own arms for it. and uh, we're gonna see if this works. All right, I've got the puller on there and all tight, so let's see what we can do here. This is what I was afraid of. Well, I don't think you guys see me give up very often, but uh, I'm giving up on this. I don't want to uh, break anything. I don't want to hurt myself. Uh, the drum is just not coming off. My homemade puller held together just fine, but um, I don't know what it was. Maybe the angle just wasn't quite right. I guess I'm gonna have to break down and buy the proper puller for this. I really thought my homemade job was gonna get it, but this thing is amazingly tight. So I guess I'll just have to take the L for the day and uh, you can't win them all. So I'll bring you back when I get the right puller and we'll try this all over again. All right guys, welcome back. It's been about a week or so since we tried this last. I have the uh, proper puller in hand. So we're gonna give this a try. I'm on the other side of the rear just because that's the way the truck was facing. So I haven't had this side open at all yet. And we've got a lot of spider activity in here. Whenever I have these big castle nuts like this, you know, the kind that take uh, cotter pins, I always like to put a paint mark, uh, one on the drum and one on the nut. So next time when I tighten it all the way back down, I know where it was before and that'll help me with alignment of the pin. So this is the driver's side rear and just a reminder that the lug nuts are actually opposite thread, they're left hand thread. Um, but the nut is still standard thread so let's get this spun off. 
And we'll try the puller. I'm not sure how the feet are supposed to go, like that or like that. We'll try that way first. That seems to be like the most logical way. All right, after a couple minutes, we've got the puller successfully on. It is quite substantial, so this has got to do the trick, right? Um, let's get it snug. And then we'll start hitting it with the hammer if we need to. It's also got this dog bone on the end. Like that. And it gives you something to hit it with. Like that. And by doing that, you're essentially tightening the screw, which is pulling the drum. I'm actually gonna go get my bigger hammer though. What do you guys think? Think the brakes have been done like the front? Or do you think they've just left them alone in the past because these are so hard to get off? Hopefully we'll find out here in a minute. Wow, that's ridiculous. All right. This axle key here was actually installed incorrectly. We'll talk more about this later. These uh, pads look just like the ones in the front. A lot of meat left on them on both sides. And the surface of the pads look pretty good too. There's no damage that I can see. Everything looks usual and customary in here. And I think these brakes were in fact done at the same time as the fronts. We've got a lot more spider activity in these for some reason. So I'll get this cleaned up and then we'll just put the drum back on. I don't think we have to do anything. Here we are on the uh, passenger side rear. This is where we were a week ago and failed. So let's try this again. One thing I didn't mention when we got the drum off on the other side is there is an axle key in there. It's about that long. I'll show you when we get it off, but that's the only thing really that you have to get lined up when you put the brake drum back on. You have to make sure that key is in, number one. And then you have to get the brake drum aligned accordingly. All right, here we go. Well, this was definitely the right tool for the right job. Well, the suspense is over. These brakes are good too. It looks to me like all four brakes were done at the exact same time. I got the same amount of oxidation on the metal, same amount of wear on the pads. Everything looks about right. Um, so before I put the drum back on, let's talk about why these things are so hard to get off in the first place. There's only a nut here and a key, and there's nothing else that's holding it onto the axle, except that there actually is. And the axle itself is tapered. It's a narrow diameter here, 
and it's a larger one towards the inner bearing and the drum is tapered also so when you're putting it on there and then you uh, tighten the knot all the way down you're effectively pressing it back onto the tapered axle and that taper is what holds it in place for the most part of course the nut is doing its job too but that's uh, one of the reasons that it's so hard to get off is because you're actually kind of pressing it onto the axle all right here's this key that i was referring to on the other side you can see it's slightly tapered just on the bottom there going up all right so one of the ways to do this is to put the hub back on the axle before you put the key in obviously you have to get the notches to line up and the way the key goes i'll put a diagram on the screen so you can see it a little bit easier but you can see the taper the taper goes down towards the axle and towards the inside so we're going to try to uh, get this lined up and then we're just going to push it in right about to there so it's kind of like flush with the outer side then we can put our washer on and we just got to torque this nut down and then we're done. So we've got the brakes uh, inspected, checked, serviced, and they are in excellent condition. Uh, thumbs up to whoever did that job in the past. They really did a good job. Except for a couple things here and there, like a couple of those big nuts up front were a little bit loose. And they had the axle keys in uh, backwards and upside down. But other than that, they did a great job with the brakes, whoever did it. And that's really good news because that means we don't have to do anything. We don't have to buy any parts. We don't have to do a brake job on it. However, in between this video and the last one, for some reason, the brake lights quit working. Before, you remember, you had to press on the pedal quite firmly to get the brake light switch to activate, and then the lights would come on, but now that doesn't even work. So something has happened. If you remember, I suspected that that brake light switch on the front of the master cylinder might be bad. So I went ahead and switched that out. I'll put that at the very end of the video for those of you who want to see what I did there. In the process of doing that, I had to drain the master cylinder, refill it, and bleed all the brakes. So anyway, I got the new switch installed, master cylinder topped off, bled all the brakes, everything works great. But the brake lights still don't work. I thought replacing that switch was gonna do it, but it had no effect. So something else is wrong. The good news is we can cross off brakes and brake light switch off of our list. Unfortunately, we have to add brake lights back to our list. I also want to add emergency brake to our list I've already started working on the e-brake I don't think it's gonna to be too difficult to fix so I'll put that in the same video with the brake lights in the future and regarding the next big thing we have to tackle the transmission transfer case leak well I've already got the parts for that sitting here on the bench I want to tackle all this other stuff first because that's gonna be kind of a big project in itself so i'll start doing some more research on the brake lights and see if i can figure out what is going on with that it just doesn't make sense to me there's no fuse box we put a brand new switch in there the only thing i can think of is maybe there's a wire grounding out somewhere anyway thanks guys for watching i always appreciate it i'm happy with our tailgate repair and everything else hope to see you on the next video please consider subscribing take care All right, here's a few minutes of footage of me replacing that brake light switch. I just captured some of the things that I thought might be interesting, and here it is. All right, I'm underneath the truck now, and I uh, removed the two wires from the front of the old switch, which is right there. And we're gonna get that removed. Which, uh, all right, it's the next day now, and again, this is the new switch with the old piece. That This is the piece that actually screws into the master cylinder. This piece had these two um, copper washers on here. You can see this one has a larger inner diameter, that one has a smaller inner diameter. The one with the larger inner diameter goes on um, towards you know, where the nut is. And the one with the smaller inner diameter goes 
right there. I'll show you later when I install it, but right in there on the truck, there's a, a banjo bolt Y adapter affair with two brake lines coming out of it. So that's why there's a hole right there. And that's why there's copper washers on both sides. You can't really tell what the thickness of the original washers were because they get crushed, right? A little bit because they're copper. So for example, here's the old and there's the new. I might be overthinking this, but just to be safe, I'm going to anneal both of these new copper washers so we know we're gonna get a proper crush on them and uh, we're gonna get a good fit with no leaks. So the idea is to heat it up cherry red. And then let it cool down. That looks pretty good right there. All right, done. Now you can quench this in water or oil, or you can just let it air dry. It doesn't matter how you cool it, it will still be annealed. All right, here's number two. All right, done. All right, they've cooled down and I've already cleaned them up a little bit. Just got some of the black off of them. So I'm not an expert on this annealing stuff. I don't want to sound like I am. However, I do know a little bit about it. Um, I know that when copper gets um, stressed or pressed or punched or worked or anything like that, it tends to get hard. That's just the nature of the metal. And when they make things like this in the factory, uh, copper gaskets, copper washers, they have to stamp them out at the factory somehow. And just the very process of stamping out these copper washers makes them hard, or at least a little bit. So the process of annealing, well, that makes them soft and pliable again. Um, applications like this use these copper washers intentionally so that when you um, cinch the hardware down and tighten everything up, the copper washers will crush or compress and that copper will sort of squish into every little nook and cranny and micro fissure and whatever is there and provide a really good seal for whatever you're trying to do. So by annealing these and making them soft again, the risk of having any leaks goes down quite a bit. All right, here's the new switch installed. Right there, that's that banjo Y fitting that I was referring to and you can see the copper washers on either side of it. That's the master cylinder right there. I also put new terminals on the ends of the wires. Got the master cylinder uh, filled back up with brake fluid. And with the help of my wife, we bled all the brakes. The brakes work great, but we still don't have brake lights. So that will be a continuation issue for the next video. So I'll sign off at this point and we'll see you guys on the next video.